Welcome to Nepenthe's Education Project page. Today's project, Coco Husk. We'll be covering the frequently asked questions, can I use Coco Husks instead of long fiber sphagnum moss? Uh, because this is becoming harder and harder to find, uh, although it is our preferred, preferred media, it's just not available in some locations. But Coco Husks is readily available at most pet shops and garden centers. The only thing with Coco is you're going to have to take a few precautions. You're going to have to prep it, and that takes several days. And your watering schedule might be a little different than you're used to. You may need to water more frequently. Uh, so when you're prepping Coco, the problem with it is the salts and the tannins. So inside, the cocoa is this natural tannin color. It's like a stain uh, and it pours out. This is actually after the third overnight soaking and you can still see the coloration. It's safe, uh, we've tested the water, uh, the mineral content, the parts per million is down below 20, which is, is great. Uh, anything below 50 is, is okay. But you're gonna wanna rinse this off really, really well. So you just open her up rinse it first really well just to remove that first layer of heavy salts then you're going to put it in a tub and soak it overnight the next day dump it rinse it again dump it etc for at least a, a couple nights overnight uh, just to remove all those extra salts and tannins now once you've got that done you can mix it with your pear light and we've got a nice little little media there. Nice and chunky, lots of circulation available to the roots. So although we've done most of our potting already, this question's been asked so often that I thought we should uh, try to, to pot some up for you like this. Anyway, um, this is a more established plant here. Uh, it's in a, a nice open orchid pot, but we're going to put it in a little bit taller a pot using our cocoa husk media here. So when you're taking a Nepenthes out of the pot, I always use the tag and go around the edge gentle across the top just to get the top moss from sticking to the edges of the pot. If you just want to do this gently and don't go down too far, you don't want to damage your roots. Once you've done that, it should pull out fairly easy. Well, here she comes. All right. And the nursery I purchased that from used the like balls. I don't like them very much. But obviously, this is a, a nice established plant and it was happy that way. Anyway, so I've got a taller pot here. And I want to kind of eyeball that. I don't want to put my Nepenthes too far down deep because that's how you get crown rot. You want to keep it above just a little bit so it gets some nice airflow. This pot only came with one drainage hole, which is not good for Nepenthes. They need lots of drainage. So we just drilled a bunch of extra holes in the bottom. Be sure your pot has drainage. Now, I can also fill the bottom of this with some extra drainage. using some orchid bark and this is one of our favorites to use in the bottom it's a special orchid mix by better grow and it's just got some charcoal and some perlite and a little bit of orchid bark in the bottom and really you could you could simply use this for nepenthes in a pinch if you cannot come up with long fiber sphagnum moss or cocoa but i prefer using the long fiber or cocoa just to straight orchid mix. All right, so now that we've got that in there, I want to remove this old media. And I've got a bucket of room temperature water here. And I'm just going to stick this little guy's bottom in there and let him soak for a second. Just agitate the water with your fingers and, and you can remove. Now, I don't want to remove too much of his old media because he's really happy. The media is not too old. I just want to 
some of this off and take a look and make sure nothing's wrong here. And actually, besides a few stragglers, everything looks pretty good. Got a few hitchhikers in the pot here. A couple of ferns. That happens. All right. That's actually looking pretty good. And I don't want to disturb him any more than I have to. This moss that's on there is currently still holding moisture. It's nice. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my handful of my priest rinsed and soaked cocoa. Let's see it in there. Check my height. And that's pretty good. Maybe just another handful on the bottom there. That looks nice. They're just going to fill in the cracks. This is, you know, using the cocoa I find is more similar to using handfuls of regular soil than potting with long fiber sphagnum. Because long fiber sphagnum, you have all those long strands that, you know, get tangled and wadded, and it's hard to get a, a good perlite uh, moss ratio in your hands at some time. But this fills in the holes nicely. worry about it getting tangled. Oh, it looks pretty good. I'm going to snip away some of these old leaves. Let's see what we got. Looks pretty good. And as this settles, you know, I'll probably go back and add a little bit more to the top. So that was a soft repot because it didn't need a full repot. So now let's show you what a full repot would look like with the moss. We're going to pot one up just in moss or um, cocoa only. So here we have some Nepenthe St. Gaia. These are very popular uh, new hobbyists. I highly recommend these. Uh, anyway, we've got a bunch of them in, but half of them were damaged, and so we've been babying them along a little bit. Uh, and I have a few here that we're going to use for experimentation between different fertilizers later. But I thought we would uh, take this opportunity to pop these up in the cocoa husks. So it's just like with regular soil instead of the moss. You're just going to dump cocoa. See, this is from the cloning facility. It doesn't have a whole lot of roots. For those of you that picture plants up at Lowell's or a garden center that are smaller, probably look like this. Um, usually potted in that mushy Canadian peat moss. And again, we're just going to eyeball the height. And that's about that. And then gently go around and tuck it in. Pretty straightforward guys not a big deal I know some of you that contact me though you you really enjoy having a visual on how to do something first and I can relate to that so there's you a visual on putting your newly acquired Nepenthes into cocoa instead of moss now also if some of you have been following and reading our care guides for a while You'll know I highly recommend bagging incoming plants to acclimate them slowly to their new environment. And my dog is whining. It's okay, Ty. We'll play in a minute. Go lay down. You can use a small sandwich baggie with the zipper cut off. Uh, these are just clear food service bags that we use. Oops, I got the wrong side silly. All right. So you're just going to put it over the top. Straighten it out so it's even. And then keep rubber bands on my wrist when I'm doing this. And then you're just going to put a rubber band 
on the center of the pot, keep the drainage holes open on the bottom. Circulation is very important. And then you're going to cut off each corner for more circulation. And we're going to leave that in there and every seven to ten days we'll just cut these holes a little bit bigger until it comes off completely and, and that's how you acclimate them slowly to your home. Now I do want to cover watering when you're using because I notice this goes dry way faster than my moss. Um, I've got a plant here that uh, we potted up as soon as it came to Berbigier Landifera hybrid and we had a little bit of uh, long fiber moss left, so I, I kind of mixed it with the peat on this one. But you can see when the top starts to get dry, I like to water with a hand pressure sprayer. Because when you do it this way, you get to water the plant just enough. See, it's just, just starting to drip out the bottom. And that's it. When you water with you know, a hand pitcher, you know, almost instantly when you start to water that, you know, you get water coming out the bottom. So I find if I do it with a hand pressure sprayer, I don't over water or waste water, especially for those of us, you know, in California areas and drought areas with the wildfires. You can also put a little live moss on top of your pots to help keep that moisture in. Uh, that's live sphagnum there. Or in this pot, we used, uh, oh, I had a bag, here we go. In this pot, we used uh, Akadama and Perlite because it's a Highlander. This is Nepenthes Raja. But we always top with a little bit of dried sphagnum moss anyway just to help keep that moisture in so it doesn't dry out as fast with the uh, with the more rocky type medias so again with these type of medias where water just pours through orchid bark cocoa I find a hand pressure sprayer is the best way to water and you can feel the difference in the weight of the pot too even on hanging pots. I'll just grab the bottom and, and give it a little lift and see if I can feel the difference. And if it needs so, then I just give it a few mists, just enough to keep it damp, but not enough to run water out the bottom. Anyway, I think that has covered everything I wanted to tell you guys about cocoa. Remember, rinse it well, soak it several times overnight if you have the patience. And, uh, water with a pressure sprayer if you have any questions or comments you're welcome to leave them or contact us via private message we appreciate you guys happy growing